So first of all, I wonder why do we need robots to plant trees? What problems can it solve? The biggest problem for our planet is global warming and climate change. And there is a very most effective way to fight climate change mm -hmm. is planting trees. In one of the harshest, driest regions on Earth, something extraordinary is unfolding. A once hopeless stretch of shifting dunes is now the stage for a silent, high-speed revolution. No, this isn't science fiction. It's happening right now, and it's defying everything we thought we knew about environmental recovery. The transformation is so massive, it's visible from space, and yet, most people have never even heard about what's driving it. These aren't your average machines, and they're not just planting trees. They're changing the rules of nature. Stick around, because what's happening deep in China's most unforgiving desert is more unbelievable than you can imagine. China's decertification origins. By the late 20th century, China faced one of the most severe land degradation crises in the world. An astonishing 2.61 million square kilometers of its territory, nearly one third of the nation's total land area, had succumbed to decertification. This environmental challenge posed not only an ecological threat but also a significant socio-economic burden, particularly for regions reliant on agriculture, livestock, and sustainable rural livelihoods. Entire provinces were affected by encroaching sands, shifting dunes, and degraded soil that could no longer support traditional farming or habitation. At the heart of this crisis lies the Taklamakan Desert, one of the most formidable natural obstacles China has ever faced. Covering roughly 330,000 square kilometers, it is Asia's largest desert and the second largest shifting sand desert in the world. Often dubbed the Sea of Death, its dunes are not only vast but extremely mobile, some shifting dozens of meters overnight. This constant movement threatens nearby transportation routes, undermines infrastructure, and frequently buries farmland under layers of sand, making the surrounding region highly vulnerable to ecological collapse. The root causes of China's decertification process are entrenched in both environmental and human dimensions. Excessive overgrazing in arid and semi-arid areas denuded the land of its protective plant cover, leaving the soil vulnerable to erosion. Decades of deforestation caused by logging and agricultural land clearing added to the instability of the ecosystem. Added to these problems were erratic climate fluctuations, particularly severe droughts and shifting rainfall patterns, which sped up soil degradation and decertification processes in northern and western China. The combination of natural vulnerability and unsustainable land management created a feedback loop that converted previously productive land into wind-blasted deserts. As communities were forced to the brink and ecosystems collapsed, the Chinese government had no choice but to meet the desert head-on. This tipping point set the stage for one of the most ambitious land restoration and decertification control efforts in history foreshadowing future innovations such as robotic afforestation and eco-barrier construction. But before high-tech machines took over the fight, an army of determined humans faced the desert with grit, hay, and hope. Early Manual Desert Control In response to the escalating threat of decertification, China launched the ambitious Three Norths Shelterbelt project in the late 1970s. This monumental ecological initiative aimed to create a massive green barrier stretching across the northern, northeastern, and northwestern regions of the country. Designed to halt the spread of deserts like the Taklamakan and Gobi, the project mobilized an unprecedented scale of resources. More than 200,000 workers, including civilians, scientists, and even military personnel, were dispatched to remote desert frontiers to begin the painstaking work of land restoration. The initiative marked one of the largest afforestation campaigns in human history and represented China's early commitment to long-term ecological stability. One of the oldest and most successful methods in these early manual endeavors was the establishment of straw checkerboard grids, easy yet efficient structures created by burying blocks of hay in a grid formation. The grids would be used to pin down the sand, lower the erosion caused by wind, 
and retard the advance of dunes. In conjunction with this, Chinese horticulturists also brought with them specially cultivated drought-tolerant flora that would thrive in dry environments with the minimum amount of water. These robust species, once established, further served to stabilize and initiate the process of ecological recovery. Primitive by today's standards, these low-tech manipulations represented the bulk of China's early decertification control. Despite the innovation and dedication that went into these early techniques, they were seriously constrained. The labor was slow and backbreaking. Workers could typically cover only a few hundred square meters of sand stabilization per day in grueling conditions. The deserts were far from any major centers, transport was bad, and climatic conditions were extreme, with blistering daytime temperatures, freezing nights, and regular sandstorms. Water and shelter were in short supply, and the workers suffered physically to a great extent. In such circumstances, even limited advancements demanded too much effort and determination. Additionally, the manpower, materials, and logistics expense of massive expansion proved impossible to maintain in the long term. Though the fruits of the efforts were tangible, tens of millions of trees planted and sections of the desert stabilized for the short term, the rate of change overall was modest. The magnitude of China's decertification issue dwarfed what was within the feasible scope by hand. These challenges eventually vindicated the necessity for mechanized solutions and, consequently, the progressive introduction of automation and eventually the use of robotic technology for desert control. The Technological Leap China's journey into robotic desert control began in earnest in 2021, when early research and development efforts were initiated to find technological solutions for land degradation. Scientists and engineers recognized that the traditional, labor-intensive methods were no longer sufficient to combat decertification on the scale and speed required. Initial prototypes of desert control robots were field-tested in some of the most challenging environments in the country, including regions surrounding the Taklamakan Desert. These early trials aimed to determine whether machines could operate effectively in extreme heat, shifting sands, and remote locations while carrying out tasks like soil preparation, seed planting, and irrigation. With the success of the initial tests, China stepped up development by investing in a vast range of specialized desert control equipment. In the following years, scientists developed and perfected over 150 various models of machines, each designed to carry out precise tasks required to restore the ecosystem. These were drilling machines for making holes to plant, robotic irrigation units, terrain navigators, and AI-powered visual analyzers for finding the best sites to plant. This iterative development cycle was directed by feedback from on-the-ground operations in the field to ensure that every new generation of machines was more suitable for actual use in demanding desert environments. By 2024, China had achieved a technological breakthrough that allowed for the large-scale deployment of desert control robots in multiple priority decertified areas. This phase entailed not only the mass production of the robots but also building the requisite logistical infrastructure to enable them to function. Production facilities were increased to accommodate orders, and local training facilities were constructed to help technicians and operators efficiently maintain and operate the systems. Their incorporation into the overall Three Norths ecological scheme was a revolutionary break with conventional methods of restoration and saw a new, entirely mechanized, information-based paradigm of land regeneration. This technological jump enabled China to increase the scale and speed of its decertification control efforts dramatically. The synchronized operation of thousands of robots greatly lessened dependence on human labor while enhancing precision and uniformity in afforestation. These robots were able to operate continuously in harsh conditions, traverse large areas efficiently, and adjust to uneven terrain through intelligent navigation systems. The creation and deployment of desert control robots marked a new frontier in ecological engineering, 
demonstrating the potential for innovation and the environmental need to spur large-scale technological solutions to one of the world's most intractable problems. Sudden terrain shifts all present mobility challenges that most machines cannot handle. To overcome this, China's desert control robots are equipped with specially designed all-terrain treads or wide adaptive wheels that distribute weight evenly, preventing the machines from sinking into soft sand. Advanced gyroscopic stabilization and terrain mapping algorithms enable each robot to adjust its center of gravity and path dynamically, ensuring consistent movement across uneven surfaces. The robots are also fitted with redundant propulsion systems and self-diagnostics to maintain operability even when partial failures occur. These autonomous systems allow for field-based troubleshooting, error correction, and route adaptation without the need for direct human oversight. Importantly, the robots are powered by hybrid solar electric systems. During the day, solar panels recharge the onboard batteries, enabling sustainable, long-duration operations in isolated regions far from power infrastructure. Connectivity is another key innovation. Each robot is networked via a secure satellite uplink or mesh network that allows for real-time data transfer between field units and central command stations. These data streams include terrain analytics, planting progress, machine diagnostics, and environmental feedback. This interconnectivity ensures tight coordination, continuous monitoring, and adaptive mission updates, enabling swift response to changing desert conditions. Taken together, the engineering behind China's desert control robots exemplifies a comprehensive, systems-based approach to one of the planet's toughest environmental challenges. Their design balances rugged durability with intelligent automation, optimizing both individual unit performance and group effectiveness. The result is a robust, scalable solution that has redefined what's possible in the battle against decertification. A global model for ecological engineering. What China has accomplished in its deserts is more than a national success, it is a blueprint for the rest of the world. As climate change accelerates land degradation in Africa, the Middle East, Central Asia, and even parts of the Americas, countries are urgently seeking scalable solutions. China's robotic afforestation model presents a new paradigm in ecological engineering, one that leverages automation, AI, and renewable energy to restore land at a pace and scale previously thought unattainable. Several nations and international environmental bodies have already expressed interest in China's approach, either through direct collaboration, technology sharing, or investment in similar research. The United Nations Convention to Combat Decertification, UNCCD, has highlighted robotic afforestation as a potential game-changer in combating land degradation and promoting climate resilience. Furthermore, China's success has sparked discussions about deploying such technologies in ambitious global initiatives like the African Great Green Wall or the reforestation of degraded lands in Central Asia and the Sahel. In this light, the transformation of China's deserts is not an isolated miracle. It is a powerful case study in how technology, when guided by urgent necessity and long-term vision, can bend even the most hostile environments back toward life. It reminds us that no challenge is too vast, no landscape too broken, when innovation and determination combine. This is not science fiction. This is happening, now. And it may just be the beginning of a worldwide revolution in how we reclaim, restore, and regenerate the planet.